Jeremiah was a bullfrog, was a good friend of mine. I never understood a single word he said, but I helped him drink his wine. All throughout season five, we get so many little nods to the 60s, mm -hmm. and we get to really see them incorporate it into their day-to-day -day life, especially with a lot of musical moments. What was it like for you guys getting to have those kind of 60s moments in? whatever year you guys are currently it's in. It's great, yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> well, especially for Roger, Brie, and Claire, you know, they have to monitor so many aspects of the personality, their language, and everything when they're around other people, their references. So it's lovely when we do get those scenes where we can let the 60s seep in, and yeah. the three of them are just together, and they can talk so candidly, and, you it's know, like have those nostalgic moments. Language. Yeah. I get told off for throwing in OKs for Brianna. <laughs> Because I'm like, you couldn't monitor yourself 100% of the time. I mean, she's not an actress, so especially when she gets angry, I like to try and get as much 60s language in there as I can, but I do get told off, so. Yeah, I, I, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I just change all the other words. But it's true, I can't understand a single word you're saying. When it comes to the stones, we have two different teams on Fraser's Ridge. We have Roger and Claire, who think that you guys should go back, hmm. and we have Bree, and Jamie, who are keen to stay at Fraser's Ridge, mm -hmm. what do you think they should do? That seems the way the way you put that there. It feels to me like very much logic versus emotion. Do you know what I mean? There's the there's the logic practicality of what you, we should go. It's safer. Which it Jamie. is for a large part of it. Uh, absolutely, but then you have. Where, where is the heart? Where is the, the feeling? Well, I think one thing we keep saying as well is that actually, you know, even if Roger and Brianna decided together, made a unanimous decision to go back to the future, um, they don't know where they're going back to. They could yeah. walk into World War Three. So if we're talking about just the safety of the future or the 1700s, you can't really weigh those up equally. Um, and they reference that, you know, the Vietnam War is going on and they left, so you never know where that's up to now. Um, and in terms of safety for Jemmy, Roger and Brie have a conversation of, okay, yes, the 1700s is brutal for a child in terms of, you know, you've got no pacifiers, no diapers, no babies, safety gates or whatever, you know, Jemmy could just open a drawer and start playing with a knife. <laughs> like, it's, it's tough, but then in the 70s you have cars and you have road safety and you have all those aspects. So. Even though there are, you know, so many emotions that come into play in the decision, the logic isn't as logical as it might seem mm -hmm. to be. Um, but for Brianna, definitely. I mean, she, I always say, even in the 60s, she went from having two parents to one to three to none. And, you know, she did essentially orphan herself, and now she has this whole family around her. Um, Jamie and Claire have now become grandparents, so to tear Jemmy away from his grandparents, to tear the family apart, is just a huge decision. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously she knows that Roger's struggling in that time, and that factors in too, so it's definitely a, a through line for season five. Yeah. So who knows? You want to go back, don't you? Our family is here. You are my family. Well, speaking of struggles, they're both going through individual struggles. Um, let's talk a little bit about Roger. He's been made the captain of Jamie's militia. Mm. Congratulations. Congratulations, yes. Thank you. You seem both terrified and thrilled. <laughs> yes, well, yeah. <laughs> How far is he willing to go to find his place in this family and also please his father-in-law? I think Roger will go to any length to fulfill his role, to find the right role, to find his place and fulfill it. Um, I think he'll do anything for his family. I think he'll do anything to provide for his family. I think he'll do anything to, to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think he's very much a, a very willing participant in that in terms of his wider family, Claire and Jamie. I think he's starting to really become part of the, the, the Fraser family also. And I think it's obviously a bit overwhelming, it's a bit daunting the fact that he's been anointed captain of Jamie's militia. He has no military experience, he's not a captain, he, he's, he'll have knowledge of military history, but that's about it. Yeah. But he throws himself into it and he wants to prove himself. And um, you know he very much has to think on his feet and improvise and come up with solutions to things which he would never have imagined having to come up with solutions for, like um, episode two I think it is at, at Brownsville. But I think you know he has to adapt very quickly. Mm -hmm. But I think he's very very determined and very willing to do that. There's something I must tell you. Stephen Bonnet is alive. <laughs> we do see that Brie is struggling with the news that Bonnet escaped the fire like the yeah. cockroach that he is. Um, take me into her mindset as she's trying to deal with this, as she's 
being super paranoid, but I think rightfully so, mm -hmm. that the potential father of her child is out there lurking. I think initially for Brie, um, she has, whether she fully believed it or not, she's found some peace in thinking that Bonnet died in the fire. Um, one thing I really did want to make sure that we did bring into the season was Brianna's PTSD. You know, it, it has been a time pass since season four and season five, but it's you know, not something that you just get over overnight. And, you know, for Brianna and for me as an actress, I'm aware that, you know, it's the first episode of the season, it's the wedding, it needs to be happy and light and everything else. And obviously, you know, Brie is ecstatic to be getting married, but there are still those demons in there for her. Um, but as ever with Brie, she's very good at putting on that facade of being okay and holding her her strength together for her family. Um, so yes, it is, you know, obviously in the first episode we get to see what Bree's actually feeling and yeah. that is heightened by uh, her sort of worst fears being confirmed that Bonnet is alive. Um, and I think from her knowing from season four, from her meeting with Bonnet, when Bonnet gives her the gem, her knowing that Bonnet therefore might actually have an interest in Jemmy and an interest in wanting to meet Jemmy and being a father, I think in knowing that he's alive, it then does raise that fear of is he going to you know, come back for Jemmy, will he hurt Jemmy? Will he take Jemmy? What's mm -hmm. what's going to happen? So for Brie, it makes her even more jumpy than she was already. Definitely.